What's up, everybody? Joe Brown with Heresy Financial here. We are talking about a bank that accidentally, in error, sent $176 million into various people's accounts on Christmas and is now in the process of pulling all of that money back. And so we're going to talk about, number one, how preposterous is that that kind of an error can actually happen, number one. And then number two, what that says about our current financial system versus competing financial systems where censorship and reversing uh, transactions like that is not possible. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so take a look with me here at this article that CNBC posted recently. This bank, Santander Bank, uh, they accidentally sent, a, they doubled up on a bunch of payments from business accounts, meaning that a lot of people got in their account uh, double the amount of money that they were expecting to get. Now, if you take a look, this is pretty interesting. It talks about the fact that they are currently working with the banks, because it wasn't just to banks that, of uh, accounts that Santander owned. Loans. Obviously, they're sending money out from one account to a bunch of other people's accounts. That's going to include uh, accounts at other banks. And so they are uh, working with these rival banks to get those payments returned to them. And uh, they're sorry about it. It was a technical issue. So the first thing that I want to say about this is that number one, errors like this, they don't happen with um, sound money, whether you think that's gold. That's not going to happen with a gold monetary system. You're not going to uh, have a company accidentally send a bunch of gold coins out to somebody. It's uh, not something that could happen just by a digital error. It also, based on because of how Bitcoin works, that's not going to happen with Bitcoin either. The other thing is they can pull this back. They're working with the rival banks to pull those transactions back, to get that money back. Now, imagine that their reason for pulling money back was something other than we sent you double the amount. Let's say the reason was something more nefarious. Let's say it was more something politically driven. They have the ability, the current financial system has the ability to censor payments, pull money back. You go and buy something that suddenly the government says, no, you're not allowed to buy that. The transaction is reversed. And so you have this ability for censorship. And when we talk about competing or potential new monetary systems in the future, we have to include in this discussion central bank digital currencies because most likely that is going to be the next step. It's not going to be everybody just switching over to Bitcoin or gold overnight. We're probably going to see more and more countries roll out central bank digital currencies to test the waters on this. Well, all you're doing then is making that feature or that possibility even more pronounced. Right now, Santander Bank has to go to these rival banks and say, hey, can you help us? Can you send that money back? If the if, if everybody has an account with the Fed, with their central bank, they've got a wallet there. That's what a central bank digital currency is. There's no banks going back and forth with each other with competing profit motives, trying to work with each other on sending payments back and forth. Who's going to make decisions on stopping what payments from what kind of merchants? It's all under one house. If the Federal Reserve witnesses these transactions, too many of these transactions are taking place, we want to stop that, we can stop that. We don't have to let any transactions go through. And if something does slip through because of a glitch, they can reverse it all like that. Contrast this with a decentralized monetary system, whether that's physical gold, whether that's Bitcoin, whatever it is that you're looking at as competing monetary systems, the ones that are most decentralized, the most free, have uh, don't have these sort of issues that uh, generate the possibility for so much power, so much corruption. It is a dangerous monetary system, and we've seen the results of this just uh, evolve over the last couple of decades to the point now where we're really talking about a central bank digital currency, which is a tool of a totalitarian dictatorship, a totalitarian government that can control all flows of money, no matter how detailed they want that control to be. Now, obviously, that's not a world I want to live in. And I think that a system like that collapses under its own weight. But just in case I keep a lot of my wealth outside the traditional financial system, 
you own physical gold, you own Bitcoin in cold storage. That way, if something like this happens and you can't buy or sell at the grocery store, you can't get paid from an employer that's registered with the government without having a Fed wallet, you at least have some of your wealth outside the system already because let's be honest, if there's a CBDC, you're not gonna be able to use it to buy Bitcoin. You're not gonna be able to use it to buy gold. You're not gonna be able to use it to buy a lot of things that the government doesn't want you to buy. And so, get those things beforehand. I've got all of my resources linked in the description below. If you're wondering about where to buy gold, how to buy gold, where to buy Bitcoin, how to buy Bitcoin, how to store it. I've got all of my recommended resources linked in the description below. As always, really appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.